Hello, welcome or welcome back to Reads of an Apple. My name is Stacy, and today, as you have seen, we are doing the Fall Bucket List book tag. I'm pretty excited to do this book tag. I am a fall girl. I am a basic bee. I love pumpkin spice. Um, I love apple cider. Like, don't make me choose between the two. But I am so ready for fall to be here. Um, I will let the cat out of the bag. My throat is very scratchy. We had the Taylor Fest, um, here in town this weekend and my throat still hasn't fully recovered from that yet. I had over three hours of singing straight, um, slash screaming <laughs> lyrics. So, you know, I've got tea. Um, I have a throat tamer uh, tea with a little bit of honey. And I'm using my Shire mug because <sighs> Lord of the Rings is also just very cozy to me. So now before we get into the questions, um, <clears throat> if this is the first book tag that you are seeing by me, I have set a goal um, starting this year and moving forward to try not to say the same books over and over to pick books I haven't mentioned in book tags before. Um, but that started at the beginning of 2023. So some of these may have been mentioned in the past on my blog or in my first year um, or two. How long have I been doing this? I don't know. Anyway, 2022 at the very least um, on booktube. So those don't count. I will have this in my playlist. It will be linked on the side. It will be in the playlist. Um, I'll also link it up above if you're interested for my book tag playlist. I love doing book tags. I love just doing these type of quiz things. So <clears throat> I'm super excited to jump into it. So let's get in it. A short one today. A short one today as long as I don't talk about things too much, right? So this was created by Read by Tiffany or Read by Tiffany. Um, I'm not sure which tense <laughs> this is. Um, it is a, a book a blog. I will link the original post down below. So let's just jump into it. She also created the fun graphics that we're going to use. So on our bucket list, item number one is to light a scented candle. And the prompt for this is a book that is lighthearted. Um, now, I did try to pick books that were very cozy, fall themed, fall set. Um, I got away from it a little bit on a couple of these books, but this first one fits right in. It is A Match Made for Thanksgiving by Jackie Lau. This is the first book in her novella series, Holiday with the Wongs. This is Nick and Lily's book. So basic premise of the series is Nick and his three siblings are coming home for Thanksgiving and surprised to find out that I believe it's his mother, maybe their grandmother, or maybe together they have planned this. But when each of the kids shows up for Thanksgiving dinner, Canadian Thanksgiving, so it is earlier um, than American one, uh, it's... They all have a blind date, basically, who was also invited to Thanksgiving dinner. Um, <clears throat> this, like I said, is Nick and Lily's story. And Nick actually meets Lily before um, this matchmaking Thanksgiving dinner. They have a really deep, instant connection. Um, it's like kind of ish one night stand, um, but they both realize that the, there's more feelings involved than they were expecting going into it. They just click, you know, they, they spend, not only do they spend a lot of steamy times together, but they also spend a lot of time talking and they go out for food and boba tea. Um, if you've read Jackie Lau, if you haven't, you will very quickly learn she is a foodie. <laughs> Um, oh, there's food is a big deal, um, in a lot of her books. And I, part of that is a lot of these books are set in Toronto or in the Toronto area where there is a big multicultural, expansive restaurant availability, um, there. So anyway, when he, when Nick arrives home for Thanksgiving, Lily's there. Surprise, surprise. However, she is matched by his parents 
to his brother, Greg. <laughs> Not him. Uh, so they had kind of dance around each other. It, like I said, it's novella length. I love this whole series. It's super fun. Um, Jackie Lau is one of my favorite authors and I highly recommend this. Um, it is the four books. So it's Thanksgiving. I know there's a Christmas. Um, I know one of them's Thanksgiving. Is it three books? I thought it was four books. I'm spacing on what the other holiday is. It might be New Year's or no, it's, it's Lunar New Year. It's Lunar New Year. Um, I'm pretty sure, but I, I highly recommend them, especially if you're looking for holiday romances for whatever season that we're in. I believe I gave this one five stars. So we will move forward. <clears throat> Bucket list item number two is to drink pumpkin spice lattes. I have not had one yet, but I have had a, I, I did try the infamous pumpkin cold brew and it was worth the hype. I definitely have a copycat recipe that I would like to try that's supposed to be a little bit healthier and a lot cheaper to make. So we'll see when I get the stuff to try that, but I am a pumpkin spice person. I will I haven't been drinking pumpkin spice lattes, but I have had pumpkin spice creamer and pumpkin pie creamer, uh, both kinds, for about a month and a half now. So I have been drinking pumpkin spice coffee, just not lattes specifically. But anyway, this prompt is a book that has a lot of hype. So continuing with the fall theme, I had to give it to a Wallflower book, and that is It Happened One Autumn by Lisa Klapis with this gorgeous step back. <sighs> this book is probably my favorite. And I know, I know Devil in Winter is amazing, but there is just something about Marcus, who is the Earl of, what is he the Earl of? Does it say? Uh, Westcliff is a running character through so many of Lisa's series. He's probably my favorite Lisa Kleipas hero. Oh, it's a really, it's a really, it's a really close tie with a couple others, but I love Marcus. I love Lillian. She is, you know, the stereotypical, but so good wild hellion American heiress who's in town. Um, this is where we get playing rounders in their knickers and I mean, the Wallflowers and then the spinoff, the Hathaways, and then the spinoff, the Ravenels are all just amazing. This is definitely, you get to see um, Sebastian, who is the hero in Devil in Winter, be the villain. Uh, so this is him pre-redemption. And it sets up so much. And I feel like the fans have definitely taken Sebastian on as like a top tier Lisa Kleypas hero, but I feel like because Marcus has been woven into so many um, of her series and of her books, and he also I feel like has a lot of the elements that she likes to use in heroes, I feel like at some point, whether or not it's still true, Marcus was like the epitome to Lisa Kleypas herself of what a Lisa Kleypas hero is. Um, and maybe I'm projecting, but I just feel like for a long time and maybe still he was like Lisa Kleypas's number one hero. Maybe it's just me, but I loved it. Five stars, obviously. Um, I highly, highly recommend Lisa Kleypas if you have not read her and you are interested in some, some more of the like original uh, or more old school-ish. Lisa Kleypas has old school romances. These are like early 2000s. And then we have like what's coming out more recently, the modern historicals. And I feel like Lisa Kleypas has written through all three time periods almost of romance, just not the OG OG like back in the 60s and 70s. But I mean, she is the queen of historical romance. Well, one of them. Uh, there's also Queen Bev, uh, Queen Beverly Jenkins. But 
Lisa Kleypas is one of the queens and deservedly so. So Wildflowers has a lot of hype. I know technically Devil in Winter has more, but I had to give it to uh, It Happened When Autumn because Marcus is one of my favorite Lisa Kleypas heroes. This is one of my favorite books. It is not my favorite Lisa Kleypas book. That is in the spinoff series, The Hathaways, but <clears throat> I highly recommend it if you have not read it. Okay, on to question number three, or bucket list item number three. These aren't really questions. Mm. Okay, so that is Go Apple Picking. And the prompt for this is a book that has fun friendships. Somehow I ended up still in historical. And this is one where I don't think it's really set during fall, but it definitely has this fall paranormal-ish vibes. And I instantly knew what I wanted to do for this one. And that is uh, The Mark of the Midnight Manzanilla by Lauren Willig. This is the 11th, the penultimate book in her Pink Carnation series. This one is super fun. Now, if you haven't heard of the series, it is one of my favorites. Um, there is a dual timeline. We have the historical setting and then we have like the modern day setting um, that is, I think her name is Elise if I remember correctly. Um, <clears throat> it's been a while. I almost want to reread these. Okay, I was correct. It is Eloise. Um, but she is Basically, in the first book in this series, um, she is learning about the Pink Carnation, who was a spy, similar to the Scarlet Pimpernel, and she finds out that it has some sort of relation to Selwick Hall and the Selwick family, and she um, uh, makes a plan, makes a deal kind of a situation to see some of the old historical uh, family records with uh, the... Um, grandmother of the Selwick line and then El Eloise kind of has a story with uh, a love story with her son grandson Colin and that runs all throughout the series but the historical story in this one this is Sally and Lucian and Lucian is the Duke of uh, Belliston and this one has the spooky fall vibes because uh, a, in the ton, in society, a, a new vampire book has just come out and it's like the big hit. Everybody's talking about vampires and spooky things. And Lucian is like recently returned to town. His parents had a mysterious death. Nobody has seen him except for a night. So rumors start going around uh, the ton that Lucian is a vampire. And Sally is out to uh, find the truth one way or the other. And she is at a ball next door to L Lucian's property. And she sneaks her way over and runs into him. And then she helps join him in figuring out like his parents uh, who killed his uh, parents. And it, it's just so much fun. I love the series so much. There is a lot of really good friendships in this. I feel like Sally has good friendships anyway, but once she kind of ends up doing this kind of spy work and hooking in with the Pink Carnation and her group of girls and like the previous relationships that we've have set up previously in the series in the first 10 books, it just to see her brought into the fold of the characters that we already know was just so much fun. I love this series two pieces I feel like it wasn't marketed properly when it came out um it was marketed to a lot in like a lot of like Christian women's magazines and this there's definitely steam in these and I just felt like the publishers let Lauren Willing down for these <coughs> A lot of the stuff that she's published since uh, is more historical fiction with romantic elements, but this series is a romance series. And like I said, there is the dual timelines, um, but it's one of my favorite historical romance series once again. And with the whole vampire situation and his spooky rundown estate, I thought that this, even though it's not set in the fall, it definitely gives fall cozy paranormal spooky vibes. So. I had to throw out the mark of the midnight manzanilla. Okay. <clears throat> 
item number four is wear a cozy sweater and that is a book that warms your heart. So once again, this one isn't set during fall. It's actually set during more winter time, but it has the word fall in the title. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll count it, right? And that I'm going to have to give it to Falling Hard by Pamela Clare. This is the third book in her Colorado High Country series. Um, color, uh, Pamela Clare is a Colorado author. This is obviously set in a small mountain town in Colorado author or in Colorado. And this is all, um, a lot of the characters in this series are a part of a search and rescue team that's up in the mountains. Um, and so we have the hero in this book. Um, his name is Jesse and he is our search and rescue member. He's also a veteran. Um, I think he did tours in Afghanistan, if I can remember correctly. But so he's once he kind of came back to town after serving um, his country, he, you know, had to kind of run away. He couldn't be in the big cities. It was triggering his PTSD. So he came up to this mountain town and he's able to kind of be away from a lot of society and relax and refresh and still, you know, serve by being a part of the search and rescue uh, mission. And he ends up saving a mom and her two kiddos. And the mom is Ellie and she is our heroine. And she is the widowed, um, the widow of, I believe he was an Air Force helicopter pilot, but so she is a veteran's widow, um, which it was really fun to have kind of both aspects of like veteran um, service of the widow of a veteran is having a romance with a veteran. And I don't think they knew each other. I can't remember if they knew of each other or something or if they knew of the, each other's like groups. Um, but he ends up saving uh, Ellie and her two kiddos when they are traveling up to their new house and there's a snowstorm. And so he's part of the search and rescue team to kind of help save them. And it ends up being very close to his place. So there's a lot of going back and forth through snow drifts to each other's houses to assist or help out. And she definitely like wants to thank him. And she has a lot a big attraction to him. This book definitely deals with grief. Um, we also got PTSD. And <clears throat> You know, also, uh, his job does sometimes put him at risk, um, being part of search and rescue up in the mountains, especially during winter time. Um, so there's, there's a, I would say a lot of heaviness and just more heavier mental, emotional, um, things to deal with in this book. But I love the series. I love Pamela Clare. And this is one where even though we were dealing with heavier topics, it didn't feel heavy. And it just, we went through the work with them. And like the prompt, like it really just made me feel so happy to see these kids be able to find a new uh, man to kind of look up to as a father figure. And for Ellie to <clears throat> find love again and you know, still dealing and the fact that it's also another veteran who's still um, in a job that puts him at risk at times. But then we also have Jesse kind of dealing with his stuff as well. And a different side of PTSD um, for veterans or military families. And I just thought this book was so well done. Um, and it was one of the ones that instantly popped up in my head. And it's been a while since I've read um, this series and I haven't read I think the final la the final book or maybe the final two books in it but at some point I definitely will go back and finish them but I had to I had to throw it to Falling Hard by Pamela Clare. Okay item number five bake cinnamon rolls which I actually did make some cinnamon rolls this past weekend which was super fun um and the prompt for this is a character who's a talented chef. So we're double dipping a little bit here. Um, 
We're doing another Jackie Lau book. I tried to pick other Jackie Lau. I tried, well, not other Jackie Lau. I tried to look at other um, chef romances I've read, and there were other ones that I was leaning towards, but that didn't quite give me the fall vibes. And I wanted to, at least, even if it wasn't set in the fall, I wanted the fall autumn vibes. So I had to give it to probably my favorite Jackie Lau, The Ultimate Pie Day Party. Now, as you can tell, this is set in March. So spring, end of end of winter, early spring, because it's set on Pi Day or around Pi Day. Um, but this is the first book in her Baldwin Village series. I've reread this book. I can't tell you how many freaking times. Um, this is Sarah and Josh. Josh is, I think he's a CEO, but he's like a big man um, for a tech company. And he kind of has a troubled relationship with his father. And his father is a retired mathematician. And Josh decides um, after stumbling across Sarah's uh, pie, it's, it's a bakery, but they pretty much just do pies. Um, and she does like savory pies and sweet pies. Um, I think it's called Happy as Pie is the name. Yeah, Happy as Pie. Um, but he stumbles in there and he has something delicious and he can't seem to stay away from Sarah or her delicious pies. So he decides to throw a pie day party as a way to kind of help reconnect with his father and really show his father that even though he's not following the life plan that his father wanted for him, he still is having a successful, fulfilling life um, as this tech CEO. And so, yeah, he plans to throw this Pi Day party to appeal to his uh, retired mathematician uh, father. And I just loved it. Like I said, I love Jackie Lau. She's one of my favorite authors. This is, if this isn't my first, my top book from her that I've read, this is definitely number two. Um, I, this series is probably what my favorite series as a whole from her. It's so good. I mean, these are her indie published books, so they are definitely on the shorter side. I just cannot recommend it to you. And this was our heroine being a, a baker. Yeah, you, you, you want to have some snacks when you read this one. But I highly recommend Jackie Lau. Um, and this one is probably, probably like 90% my favorite book. Um, it just, it hits everything. Um, you know, Jackie Lau does such good, just such a good job in representation. We have different kinds of Asians throughout her books. Um, we have white characters. Um, we've, um, especially in some of her more recent books, we've had some African-American characters um, and different kinds of Asians. So like Eastern Asian, uh, Middle middle asia or western asia and i just you know there's lgbtq characters uh there's people with mental health situations she just does a good job of like making this universe that she's created feel real like i want to live in toronto like i would love to visit or live in toronto but specifically jackie lau's toronto it just feels so real to me and if I could move, if I was going to move to like a big city and not a small town in romances I've read, I would probably, big city wise, Jackie Lau's Toronto would be top of the list for sure. So once again, I'm imploring you to please read Jackie Lau. I, you will not regret it. I love her books. She has such good steam. A lot of her books um, also talk about different type of sexual situations, whether it's abortion, prophylactics, um, toys, you know, sometimes I've definitely read books where, um, there are women who are too in their head and can't really get off. And it's a conversation and something that, uh, the woman and her partner have to kind of figure out to get a satisfying experience for both of them. And I just love the realness that Jackie Lau brings to her books. So once again, a gush fest for Jackie Lau. But I but I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it. If it implores more people to read her books, then I I have done my job, right? Okay. I'm gonna take another drink and hopefully I can feel my throat is getting scratchy the more that I talk. So let me take a drink and then we will do the final 
Okay, the final item is jump into a pile of leaves. And the prompt of this is a book that made you jump for joy. So I had to, with the fall spooky vibes, um, I had to give it, I had to throw a full on paranormal in here. And you're probably not going to be surprised, but I have not used this specific book yet. So we're going to do it. Resting Witch Face by Juliet Cross. This is the fifth book in her Stay a Spell series. This is Reuben and Jules which has been teased from the very beginning. This is a second chance romance. I'm not a big second chance romance fan, but the way it was done here made sense. <clears throat> it starts with Devraj and uh, Isadora's wedding, which when I reread this before Grimm and Barrett came out, I totally forgot that their wedding was in this book specifically. Um, we've got a masquerade ball, which also kind of fits with the Halloween spoopy vibes. I mean, he's a vampire, she's a witch. So, I mean, we don't spend very much time in New Orleans in this book, but New Orleans, I feel like just kind of has a spoopy up atmosphere. And I just, I love Julia Cross. I love the Stay of Spell series. I love Ruben. I love Jules. I love the way the vampires are done in this series and how Jules is just so powerful as a witch and their dynamic together is just even better than you were like that I was expecting coming into this book and yeah I read this it came out around Halloween I want to save 2022 and I read this in one sitting on Halloween I could not stop myself. So this book will always say Halloween to me because that's when it came out and that's when I read it. And I have no, I can't even remember like when it's actually set, like the time of the year, but to me it will always be fall. Plus we have the gorgeous orange cover with like the pinks and the like blue green turquoisey colors and the purples and the cover just says fall vibes. The series is like cozy paranormal, which also is like fall vibes. And I just love it. I love it. So if you have not jumped on the Stay a Spell hype train, the Julia Cross hype train, all aboard. Welcome. We've got, we've got Julia Cross. I mean, honestly, this whole list are, is like some of my favorite authors, which sometimes that happens, not all the time because I'm trying to pick books I don't talk about very often, but this one, you know, fall being my favorite season, it ended up being basically a lot of my top favorite authors, which is fun, but Resting Witch Face, highly recommend it, highly recommend the series, highly recommend Julia Cross, cannot wait, cannot wait. Um, in the next month or so, we should get the special hardback editions um, that were on Kickstarter. So I cannot wait to get my hands on those finally. So yeah, that's it. Those are our six prompts. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop talking at you because my throat is killing me. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to leave me a comment down below, let me know what you would recommend for fall spooky uh, cozy vibes. I guess this is more like the cozy fall vibes and not necessarily the spooky vibes, but they work. Um, let me know what your favorite book is that fits those vibes. Or if, uh, you do this tag as well, definitely let me know and I would love to check it out to see what books you might put for these prompts. If you'd like to just leave me an emoji, leave me pumpkin emoji or an orange emoji, pumpkin or orange, whatever you want to do. Um, even, even like the red fall leaf, you know, something fall. And I think that's it. So I'm going to drink the rest of my tea and go relax. Um, in case you were wondering, I don't think I mentioned this is from Enchanted Fandoms. I'll link them down below. This is their current series that they're doing for their drinking vessel, which is their, uh, book inspired drinking vessels. Um, they're not all mugs, but the current... Um, series that's running are these mug uh, ser tickets. It's a train ticket kind of to the Shire and then they come with a spoon. So 
I'll link Enchanted Fandoms down below. I'm not an affiliate or a member or anything. I'm just a happy subscriber to their drinking vessel subscription box. But I think that's all I have for you. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you all soon with another video. Cheers.